Yo, what's up mountain bikers? Today we're talking about FTP for MTB. Does it matter? Whether you're an XC racer, an enduro racer, or a downhill racer, does this roadie metric actually matter for you? Well, actually, I've done the science on it, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how we can use this information in the most simple way possible, and how we can get out of this rut that we're stuck in and make it to the next level in our racing. So make sure you stick around to the end where I'm gonna to talk to you about one of my favorite workouts for mountain bikers at every single level, at every single discipline. I'm gonna show you the science, I'm gonna show you the stats, and what I really want to to do is help take you to the next level. Make sure you check out the links below in the description where I have links to the very first research study done on FTP and mountain biking. Also links to the podcast that where I talked about this. And if you really want to take your mountain biking to the next level using your power meter, check out the link to Training Peaks University for my course on the fundamentals of mountain biking with a power meter. In a way, most mountain bikers probably think they're more like Usain Bolt than they are Elliot Kipchoge. Right? We think we have to repeat sprints over and over and over. Therefore, we are sprint athletes, whether we race XC, downhill, or enduro. Now, as an upcoming sports scientist 10 years ago and a mountain biker myself, I couldn't believe that measures like FTP meant anything for what I was doing in my cross-country racing and in my enduro racing, which was just becoming popular at the time. I just gotten most of the way through my bachelor's degree in sports science, and I thought I knew everything about mountain biking, sports science, physiology, and kind of everything. Thing. But what I found is that I didn't actually know as much as I thought I knew. So if you've ever looked at a power meter file from a mountain bike race, you'll see that this, the power's all over the place. Spiky, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. When we look at that, we think, well, if I want to train to become a better mountain biker, I need to sprint more, sprint more, sprint over and over and over, because that's exactly what's happening in a mountain bike race. Well, it kind of makes sense because in a, in a way that is what's happening. But a mountain bike race is really long. Even, even a downhill race is like pretty long, right? There, we're three to five minutes in a downhill race. You sprint a few times really hard. Enduro races are really long, big days, long stages where you have to put in effort after effort after effort. And especially XC races, we need to dig deep on climbs, recover very fast on downhills, and then repeat the effort again up the next climb. In contrast, an FTP test is super steady, right? You go as as hard as you can, kind of as steady as you can, and you go hard for 20 minutes. If you've ever done one, you know they're absolutely brutal. But it's really good because like FTP is meant to represent the highest level of aerobic metabolism. I guess there are like some other tests that you could do such as critical power. I also did some research looking how that related to MTB. But FTP is a good one because there's some real value in being able to use that information to set your training zones. Now, if you clicked on this video, I assume you already know what FTP is and that you've done it. But let me bang through what I usually do with mountain bikers. Andy Coggin and some other scientists created the 20 minute FTP test. And what you do is you go as hard as you can for 20 minutes. You take 90% of that value and that's said to represent the power that you could do for one hour. Now it kind of makes sense because you can go harder for 20 minutes than you can for an hour. So the power is going to be higher for that 20 minutes. So take 90% of that and you're around about your FTP. Now FTP is meant to represent your lactate threshold. It gets a little bit convoluted here because your lactate threshold is kind of the gold standard of what your aerobic metabolism is. The problem is to do a lactate threshold test, you need to go into a lab, you need to increase in the intensity that you go, and a scientist is gonna take your blood and analyze that to see if you're at kind of a steady state level. Once you hit something like maybe 4.0 millimoles per liter, we say that you've hit your lactate threshold and anything above that, you're really limited in, in what you can do. Like say your lactate threshold is 300 watts, if you're riding at 350 watts, you're not gonna be able to hold it very long. Whereas if you ride at 300 watts, well, you could probably maintain that for about an hour. All this stuff is an absolute pain. Like who goes to a lab to get their uh, lactate tested regularly? I mean, you, you can, you can absolutely go do that, but there's also error associated with those methods as, as well. So what I like to do is I like to do the FTP test for every athlete that I work with. Now there's the 20 minute test, there's the eight minute test. Sometimes I even use a 10 minute test. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, honestly, I don't think it really matters. The only thing that we're trying to find is we're trying to find a level at which you can sustain it, below which, well, you can definitely sustain it, above which you can't sustain it. So once we find that level, we got it and we can set training zones based on that. Also, the beautiful thing about once we have that is we can test it over and over to see if we have a performance improvement. And that's it. That's really what we want with our FTP test. We want to gauge and track improvement as we go, because otherwise we don't know if the training that we're actually doing is actually helping us improve. 
So when I was a young scientist looking at these power meter files, I mean, power meters had just come out for mountain bikes. I'd been using one on my road bike a little bit. I read all these roadie books and they didn't really mean much to me because I'm just thinking I need to go hard. I need to go hard as a mountain biker. So when it came time to do my undergraduate research project, I could have done like something like an internship, which I really wasn't interested in, or I could do a research project. I hit up the guys at PowerTap and they actually agreed to like support my study. They sent me some power meters, uh, one for the mountain bike, one for a road bike and a trainer. And we set out to do this pretty optimistic test on mountain bikers. Okay, so what did we do? So first off, since I was a cheeky scientist, I created my own test. I called it the intermittent power test. And I looked at a bunch of mountain bike race files and what I found is that probably 45% of the time was pedaling and 25% of the time was coasting. So when I created the IP test, it was 20 efforts of 45 seconds on, as hard as you can go, and 15 seconds off. So it was actually really hard and we had a group of 10 or so mountain bikers repeat this test and also a 20 minute FTP test. It was like, it was such a pain to do this one because I was traveling all around. I was going to people's houses, setting up the trainer with a week in between to get them to do these tests. We'd kind of have like a party, a bunch of mountain bikers come over and we'd do these tests. Everyone was absolutely thrashing themselves. We did it properly and it was randomized so that we made sure that we weren't introducing bias into the results. And it ended up being a really good time. At the end of it, what we did is we did an XC race. Everyone got their cool custom number plate it was actually a plate my dad was there using a stopwatch to take down times as we finished this race and then we ran the statistics so the first thing that we found was really interesting first off this intermittent power was highly associated with functional threshold power what this means is if you had a high ftp you also had a high intermittent power so that one got me thinking I really wasn't sure what to think about this one yet the second thing that we found is we did linear regression models looking at how ftp and IP relate to cross-country race time, right? So if you have a higher FTP, can you go faster around an XC course? And the answer is yes. Well, okay, if you have a high IP, can you go faster around an XC race course? Yes. So once we actually compared the results, we found that intermittent power was better at predicting cross-country race time. So that was great. That means that my hypothesis was proved and that's exactly what you want as a scientist. But then I had to write a discussion for this when I submitted it for publication and I actually was humbled and I learned a lot. Now back to that IP being related to FTP. You go hard and rest, go hard and rest. Now that's highly related to your ability to go hard for a long time right that's highly related to your ftp this means the people that are able to repeat sprints over and over and over are also very aerobically fit so what that kind of said to me as i dug more into the research especially this paper by coil it said that if you want to be better at repeating sprints over and over or repeating hard efforts at least over and over you need to have a very high aerobic metabolism and that totally blew my mind because the way i'd been training is just sprints 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 but what i really should have been doing is threshold, 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 to try and get my threshold as high as possible to be able to do more hard efforts. What's really happening is that if you're really highly aerobically trained, you can, you can recover quicker in between sprints. That's exactly what we need. I mean, think about it, what we're doing in mountain biking. Let's say we have a steep pinch, we go as hard as we can up that steep pinch. We have a short time to recover, only a few seconds as we go down, and then we need to repeat it again. So what this means is that if we're really highly aerobically developed, we can do more of those hard efforts. And that's how you win a cross-country mountain bike race. Now, enduro and downhill riders, we haven't forgotten about you because this is also really important for you. Now think about it. A downhill and an enduro race isn't a 10 second all out sprint. It isn't a 30 second all out sprint. It isn't even a one minute or a five minute effort. It's go as hard as you can, hold on for dear life in a way, and then repeat that again. Now you can kind of see if you've been following what I've done since then, you can kind of see how this kind of all came full circle where I've been working with mountain bikers for a long time. We've won a lot of national championships, World Cup top tens overall, and now we work on braking and we built this sick brake sensor so we can start to understand the other side of it, right? But it was really interesting at the time and it really blew my mind and it really guided the way that I trained mountain bikers from that point on where we really focused a lot on raising their level of aerobic metabolism, raising their FTP. I'm planning to do a future video where I look at my favorite interval sessions for any kind of mountain biker and I'm going to give you a free one right now. That free workout is one that's going to help you raise your FTP and here it is. Like this is probably one of the most straightforward workouts that you can do and, and there's a lot of really good things about it. So this is two by 20 minutes 
in zone four. Now remember zone four is a zone, there's a lower level and there's an upper level. Now there's no reason to dig insanely deep on this one because 20 minutes is a really long time. But two by 20 minutes in zone four is a banger workout for any kind of mountain biker. So what this does is it gets you working just below your FTP, but what it's doing is it's creating all these metabolic byproducts that you're gonna need to be able to buffer when it comes time to do your next FTP test, right? So we're going pretty hard, not too hard, not absolutely smoking ourselves, which means that we can recover fast and do it again soon. All right, so I hope that helps you and I hope that helps you set your training for this upcoming season. Now, if you want any help from me, feel free to reach out, right? That's what I do is I help mountain bikers. Stay tuned for some more videos. I'm gonna do a bunch of things on more interval sessions and also some things about braking, which is where I spend most of my time these days, developing the sickest new technology to help mountain bikers get faster without getting fitter. Of course, you can combine that, which is what we really want. We really want to take mountain biking to the next level. So check out the links in the description. Subscribe, share this with your friends. Like, it's really hard to get noticed in this YouTube world. I'm trying to make some more videos and share this information that I have. So if you can like, subscribe, and share it with your friends if you liked it, that would really help more people see it. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.